Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning in the Midwest region and New England. It is nine o'clock central time. It is 10 o'clock Eastern time. So I'm super excited to be here with all of you and be your host today. My name is Michelle Hoyt and I am a regional trainer here in the Midwest region. For those of you in New England, I am Maureen Colvin's counterpart and we do split responsibilities. We're doing lots of webinars on Bouge and and we are very excited to have you here this morning. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is a hot topic here at Remax Integra, but Remax in general. And I believe we have some folks from other Remax regions that have joined us. I saw the registration list. So welcome to all of you as well, because we all have Bouge websites. So we're going to get creative today in this next hour. And we're going to talk about some different ways that you can set up your website, how you can design it, but even some best practices on other things like actually promoting it and some things you might not have even thought about. So I'm going to show you a series of slides here in the beginning that we're going to go live and we're going to put, put our hands on this tool and we're going to uh, drive the car is basically what we're going to have what's going to happen. So you're all getting very familiar with virtual training. I know these days. So just to remind you, you're on a webinar. So you are in listen only mode. And if you could take note by hovering down to the bottom of your screen, there is a Q&A folder. I'd like you to type your questions throughout this webinar in the Q&A box. Erica Kappa, who I will introduce here in a second, is going to be monitoring those questions and helping you in any way that she can. And uh, will help you out and, and we will answer some of those live as well. So just wanted to mention that. And I know we have sound and video checks, so it's good to have all of you here today. So as I mentioned, we have a huge movement here at Remax at home together. If you've not received, we sent emails out a couple of weeks ago with all the at home together graphics that you can use on social media. In fact, if you go to change your profile picture on Facebook right now, there is a profile pic frame and it's easier to do on desktop than on mobile on the application, but there's an at home together frame that you can put on your profile picture on Facebook. So if you've not seen that, please take note of that. And that should be there for everyone at Remax. And we're in this together. So let's get through this. We're going to all come out a lot stronger on the other side. All right. So welcome. As I said, my name is Michelle Hoyt. I am a regional trainer for Remax Integra, but I am, again, I welcome all Remaxers that have joined us this morning, and I will be your host today. I will let our next, uh, my very special guest, a great friend of mine, and I love working with her. I think we make a great team, Erica Kappa. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for the great welcome, Michelle. As she said, my name is Erica Kappa. I am the Director of Support for Remax Integra North America. So I lead the team that supports all of the agents and brokers in Ontario Atlantic as well as all of our US regions. So just a couple of things that I wanna mention as we, uh, before we embark on this exciting webinar with Michelle, is there are a couple of ways that you can reach out to our support team. Um, if you experience issues with the actual platform, if your screen doesn't look like Michelle's does, that probably isn't something that we're going to be able to assist with on this webinar. So I would encourage you to reach out directly to our support team. The best way to do that is through maxhelpsyou.com. Um, and we'll be able to, to help you right away to make sure that you're able to get your websites set up and published. Um, as Michelle said, in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen, that is going to be where I monitor all questions that are asked. So if you can, um, pop your questions right into there. I'll respond to them. And then Michelle will also do um, or answer several of these questions live as well as we go through the training. Absolutely. And Erica, you want to go ahead and take the lead on this next slide since you are the director of support? Definitely. So this slide that uh, Michelle is showing is how you can reach out to our support team. So maxhelpsyou.com, we have an extensive knowledge base there. Um, we typically publish about 20 articles a week. So as we receive training related questions or um, FAQ related questions, we go ahead and build those knowledge base articles. The whole purpose for that is because we want for you to be able to search this knowledge base and to find answers quickly to very specific questions that you may have. So hopefully you don't even have to worry about reaching out to anybody and you can get help right away. Um, we have step-by-step -step tutorials. You can submit a help ticket directly to us from there. Um, most of you know that we did have instant chat. We have turned that off temporarily because of some of the volume that we're receiving, uh, but we do expect to have instant chat live within the next week or so again. So 
Um, you can also email us through support at remaxintegra.com. But again, I can't stress this enough. We do encourage you to go through maxhelpsyou.com just because there's a robust amount of information that's there for you. Thank you, Erica. And Erica and her team have been working, putting in some really long hours, especially since the Bouge rollout. So I can't thank you all enough. And I work very closely with them. I'm working with them right now. We're, we're recording a lot of videos behind the scenes that will be added to the knowledge base. And it's a fantastic resource center. So please go to maxhelpsyou.com and bookmark this on your Chrome. For those of you that are from other regions, you will still go to product support. But uh, those of you here at Remax Integra, this is what you will be doing. So we welcome you. All right, so speaking of resources, one of the things that we have been doing frequently and especially as of lately is we're posting all of our webinars public on the Remax Integra YouTube channel. So any webinar that you've seen from us, from our team in the recent weeks is being published on public on YouTube so you can search for it. So just to let you know, all the Bouge webinars, all the trainings, uh, any Learn to Earn Online that we've been doing, they're all there. So please subscribe to our, our channel and you'll get notified every time something new is posted. Also, Remax University, so kudos to the Remax LLC training team. They have done a fantastic job of organizing and categorizing all these videos. It's not an easy task to continuously record technology tutorial videos when it changes so rapidly, and it's hard to stay on top of that. So they are doing a great job giving us new content every day in Remax University. In fact, one of the new features that have been added as of the last week is this last box on this left-hand side called Bouge Learning Tracks. And when you open that up, you'll see on the right-hand side that the, it'll categorize learning plans, especially those of you that are new to Remax, so you're already taking on a lot to begin with. But, or if you just wanna take your time and learn at your own pace, there's some really good plans that are set up here based on the different categories. So we do encourage you, these are small bite-sized videos. They're eight minutes, seven minutes. Generally speaking, all of them are under 10 minutes. And it's a really good place for you to go and give you some direction. So look, what are we gonna talk about today? We're gonna to talk about a lot, but these are some of the key things that I'm going to focus on. Some of them may not necessarily be in this order, but we will start that way. So I thought it would be good, instead of waiting till the end, once we get through all the design ideas and talking about, here's what it really comes down to is, no one's going to see this amazing, creative, aesthetically pleasing website that you created unless you promote it. No one's going to drive traffic to your website, but you are as good as you will, right? So we're gonna talk about that first, just some ideas on how to get it out there once you get it published in the way you like it. We're all, of course, we're gonna talk about a lot of you are still a little curious about how to add a new page or maybe why to add a new page and where that would go. So we'll definitely walk through that. We're gonna talk about optimizing your pages for search engine optimization. So we'll walk through that too. And then of course, we're just gonna talk in general about creative content ideas, how to use the blocks that are there. And then of course, how to set up links to customer area searches. There are some features that are coming later this year with the website, but we have some workarounds right now that'll help get you started in the meantime. And then of course the menu. So this is what we're gonna to cover today. So let's talk about promoting your own website. There are so many places where once you publish your website and assign your custom domain, or if you wanna use the default domain that's assigned to you, which is your remax.net username.remax.com, you all get an assigned username. We'll look at that when we get inside the program. You can put it on all these different places. And are you doing this now already? and might not have thought about this. So just about any place you have a profile online, and this is social media, this is the real estate tech portals, all of these things listed here, there is a field for you to plug in your website URL. So if you're not doing this or taking advantage of this, you are missing out because people want to see that. Your website is your virtual storefront and you owe it to them to First of all, with all the work that you're going to put into it, you owe it to them to be able to find you, to see, I talked to an agent yesterday, he said, I want people to see my website to know that I'm legitimate, I'm legitimately in business. And that's absolutely the best approach to take to it. So that's what you've got to think about. Even in your texting signature. So here's some ideas here. By the way, see these graphics on the slide? I got those from Photofy. That's right, these graphics exist in the Photofy app. If you've not signed up yet, you get 90 days for free. 
and then it's four dollars a month thereafter and photofy is a photo editing app that has an entire library of remax graphics and resources and it's huge so that's why i'm using these graphics so you don't have to create anything but you can use these as a social post as you can see there's two different color schemes and on a sample post right above it in yellow hey everyone i've been working on my i've got a brand new website people love the words brand new i have a new website I'm excited about it. Here it is. Check it out. Visit me and then always, always provide your contact information. So this is a, a there's a lot of different ways to promote your website. So everything we're talking about today, design and making it look good and having fun with it. None of it's going to really pay off for you unless you are putting it out there, unless you're promoting it. And a lot of you take this to a whole new level with Google Analytics and tracking pixels and, and all sorts of things. But these are some of the basics that are available to you today and for free and where you should be promoting it. So here's another tool that you might not have forgot about. Now let's say that you do something like this where you do a social media post and in the yellow box where it says, please visit me at, notice this is a long URL and I did that on purpose to show you this next slide. It's a longer URL, it's not that attractive. And here's the other piece of it too. When people click directly to your URL, let's say your custom domain is isellhomes.com. When you post that somewhere, you're not always able to track the amount of clicks that go on it. However, Remax has a tool in Max Center called the URL shortener. And the URL shortener will not only shorten the link, so it makes it look a little bit more friendly in the post for the eye, and it will also track the amount of clicks. So then you can see the activity that's happening and see how effective your post really is and how many eyes are upon it. So notice at the top here it says, so I actually can change, and I did, I changed that long URL to a trackable link inside this URL shortener tool. This shortener tool can be located in the apps of Max Center right here, the Remax URL shortener. Here's what happens when you actually do this. When you set up, it'll give you the option to create a new link. You drop in the existing link and then it will automatically generate a shorter URL for you. And you can see here, this is a perfect example. So yesterday towards the end of the day, around five o'clock, I did a Facebook post to promote this webinar. And some of you signed up today because of it, which, which I thank you very much. But you'll notice I posted it right around, I, it was uh, 5 p.m. Central. And by doing so, what happened is 32 clicks happened on that particular registration link. I wouldn't have known this if I had just posted the full Zoom registration link. By going in and taking, this is the original link, which was really long, and it got shortened to this, I'm now able to see how many people are actually clicking and going to my registration page. So this is something you can do with your website all day long. So if you want to post the actual URL shortener, any place you're promoting it, then feel free to do so or on any digital ads that you do or Facebook ads. So I highly recommend this URL shortener tool. Google My Business. So I want to quickly mention this. I did mention this earlier when it comes to promoting your website and where to put it. So Google My Business is something I implore you to really look into if you haven't done this already and claimed your Google My Business profile. And the reason is because this is your virtual business card. So not having a Google My Business profile is like handing out a business card with no information on it. So it is key that you have this set up. When people go to find you, they're going to Google. Those of you that use Siri on your Apple devices, guess what? That's Safari's tied back to Google. So Safari isn't operating on its own. But when someone asks their phone, hey Siri, show me a real estate agent in this area, guess what shows up? What's going to show up is those of you that have claimed your Google My Business profile, completed it, and you have reviews on your profile. So any, review, any profiles that have reviews on them will be favored. So, but part of that profile in completing it is to actually include your website on there. And that's part of it. So this is what a Google My Business profile looks like from a mobile perspective. But you'll notice the when you do this and type, just go into your Google browser and type in real estate agents in the name of your town. Notice who shows up first. It will be those that have a complete profile and actually have reviews. Whether they have 100 or whether they have three, that's what happens. But this is an, an extremely important part for you to actually go in and put your website on here. So again, it gives you that complete approach to a profile on Google. And this is really, really important. 
You can even share your profile in various ways too. So I just wanted to mention that. If you want more information on Google My Business Profile, there is a free support resource for you. You are going to get a copy of these slides after this webinar. And there's also a Google for Small Business YouTube channel you should subscribe to. And Google My Business has its app. So once you create your Google My Business profile, you're good to go. Now, for those of you that have never done this before, you have to have a Gmail address. Sorry, but you do in order to log in and complete this. So you will have to get a Gmail in order to do this, okay? So again, this is another opportunity for you to feature your website. You'll notice on this previous screen right here is the URL for this particular Remax Teams website, okay? Photos, so let's talk about photos. There's a huge library of photos inside the Bouge website platform, and we're gonna look at those. But I also want you to know there are some free and by free, I mean royalty free and cost wise free resources out there for you to get some images, potentially even around your area. So particularly Pexels, which I've used, picks the bay. You can find images on in a lot of different cities around the country. You can find just general images like of homes or maybe even the sites and attractions around your area or if you just have a certain project in mind, you can go to these resources for free. There's also a really fun tool called removebg.com, which, which stands for removebackground.com. So essentially what that is, is you can take any photo of people, remove the background, and then you can actually superimpose yourself onto any other photo. So it's a lot of fun to do, but I just wanted to mention these two and give you a general idea where you can get some free resources. Don't go to Google Images and just download an image because you like it. You may not have the rights to use it. So be very, very careful about that. We don't want you to get in trouble. We don't want you to get a cease and desist letter from any other entity. So please uh, make sure you have access to images you have permission to use. And again, we'll look at those inside the Bouge platform. So, hey, Michelle? Uh-huh, sure. We've got a couple of really good questions. Can we go ahead and stop real quick so we can address these? Absolutely. So Cindy asks, the disk personality webinar that was shown at the beginning, is that, um, you said that was on a public page and then went on to talk about RU. Is that disk personality webinar available on RU? It is not at this time. So as I mentioned, we are posting all the, the recorded webinars for on the Remax Integra YouTube channel. When I say public, that means you can search for them. So we do tag them. So you could type in disk personality and find it. Just type in Remax webinars. Those are some tags that we've set up. And uh, we are in the process of uploading certain content to RU, but YouTube is obviously gonna be simple and easy for you to find. So we're making sure that you have easy access to those. And then John asks, what happens in Google My Business when multiple agents claim the same office business address? it takes over the address. So actually, technically, you can all use that address. It's, it's very common practice. The office will use it, you will use it. What it will essentially do is by claim, having an official address like that, it will drop a pin on the map for you so that you do look like a legitimate business. So this is very common practice. And those of you that are in multi-office companies should definitely obviously use the address of the office that you're technically based out of. So it's, again, it's very much allowed. And then another question is, how do you get the testimonials into Google My Business? So there's, in Google My Business, so you have to log into your account, uh, or I'm sorry, and anyone can go to a Google My Business profile and write a review. In fact, let me just go ahead and show you. Let's find one. So I'm gonna go here. And I happen to know this awesome Madison, Wisconsin team has a very complete profile. So when I click on this, I wanna click here to expand their profile. So this is the Mad City Dream Homes team. And when I go onto their profile, now keep in mind when it comes, when someone can write a review on your Google My Business profile, this is not assigned to a specific role. So unlike Zillow, where you have to be a seller or buyer, this is anyone can write a review. This could be another small business owner in your community. This could be someone you serve on a board with at a charity. This could be a preferred partner or vendor. So there's a lot of different ways you can go about this. Now, down here, it says write a review. 
So as you can see, this team has done an amazing job writing some reviews. So I'm gonna click right here. And this is where you could actually send this section or this link to someone to write a review for you. So as you can see, it says posting publicly, so they don't really get a choice. Whenever they, they have to be logged in as their Gmail, and then you get to write about this. You can also post photos as well. So once you complete your profile, where it says write a review, you essentially could go up here and copy this URL and send that to someone or shorten it, <laughs> like we just talked about. So I hope that answers your question. Let me know that it does. I think that did answer the question. And the last one that we'll go over right now is Andy asks, how much does Google My Business cost? It's free. Yay. <laughs> it's free and that's a really good question. So I learned about this uh, last summer at a tech seminar. Actually, yes, it was last summer. And even though I think we all knew it existed in, in earlier years, it used to be called Google Local, but now Google My Business Profiles is what it's been renamed and rebranded. But this is a free tool. And again, as long as you have some reviews on there, you will be favored over any other agent in your market that has zero or has not even claimed their profile. The way that you know that you've claimed it is find yourself on Google and you, if you see yourself appearing like this, and if it says right here, claim this profile, that means you need to claim it. If it says suggest an edit, that means you don't get to claim it, someone else has. Now, obviously that's not gonna happen to you as an individual, hopefully. And in this case, this team has already claimed this profile and is doing an outstanding job with it. Now, the key is with those reviews is to make sure that you're asking for those throughout the process with your clients. I know that there's a team in Peoria, Illinois that does an amazing job. They send four emails, two before the closing and two after, and they make it easy for people by including a paragraph that says, click here to review us on Google, click here to review us on Zillow. So these are all key things that you can really hone in on. All right, so let's get back to the websites. Thanks everyone, great questions. I, I love talking about this, uh, Google My Business and just getting you that maximum exposure, so thanks. Photofy, so again, I can't say enough about Photofy. This is a, an application that in the Remax system we've been using, all of our graphics are there. This is where you're going to see in a moment where I have incorporated the use of, photo, of Photofy photos in a bouge website. And I'm going to show you different ways that you can use them to your advantage. And the best part is you don't have to do a lot of work on the Photofy app. So let's talk about some custom page ideas before we get into the website itself. I think this is really important. So a lot of you have been asking and wondering what else can I do with my website? What would I consider a custom page beyond the typical buyer seller services and maybe some things about the area? Well, think about this. You could create a page that features your preferred partners. Now, I know some of you have mixed feelings about that. You don't want to give away all of your tools right away. You want to hold back a little, but you know what? Give those preferred partners, their small businesses, a shout out by giving them that recognition. Obviously, in, in all of you, you need to at least provide two or three, not just one. And so, however you want to set this up, this could be your preferred partners. This could be your handyman services, this could be your lenders. Uh, most of you will probably do that, right? So think about that. Feature some of your favorite places. You know, hey everyone, I know that there's a lot going on in our community, but here's some of my favorite places. And you know, I could say these are Michelle's 10 favorite places in Chicago where I live. So you know, whatever you wanna do, then you could have fun with that. Uh, same thing with the, you can do a top five or 10 list on, depending upon where you're at for very specific areas like parks or your top favorite beaches, your top favorite lakes or things to do in your area. That could be something that you could do as well. We love our clients. Why not have a page that features photos of your clients that have all closed on their home or, you know, maybe anything, if you take a family photo of them, you know, obviously if you want to get their permission, you certainly should do that, but it could just be that or just you out doing things with them and just on tour or just helping them or even just putting a sold sign on, uh, on their home itself. And in videos, it could be images as well. Um, you could have an entire page you could dedicate to as a video gallery where you feature maybe your top three videos of the week. You can also do video slideshows as a lot of you have explored and found out. And then as I, it's a good thing we're talking about client reviews. 
As you all know, and we'll look at it again, you can put copy and paste manual reviews into the manual testimonial section of your Bouge website, but you can also add the Zillow review block. But if you wanna create a whole page that is similar to what we talked about, where you wanna lead people back to your Google profile or your Facebook business page reviews, that's something you can think about doing too. And then right now, social media block that's on the Bouge website, it feeds to the Remax LLC social media content, which is great, but coming in the future, you will be able to add your own social media streams as well. But for the time being, if you wanna create a page dedicated to just that where you have hyperlinks to your profile, that's an idea. So again, these are just ideas that I'm putting out there. So you can start really thinking about what you really wanna do with your website, okay? All right, let's go live and let's explore some fun topics and what we need to do. So everyone understands that you've got to go to Mac Center to get to Bouge, not Launchpad. It's always going to be Mac Center. We're going to go to our applications. If you have not favorited Bouge yet, please do so, so it'll show up first. Before I get started on the live portion of this, Erica, are there any questions I should address? Nope, we've answered all of them. All right, thank you. Thanks, everyone. All right. So as we get into the Bouge system here, what's going to happen is it's going to open up by default to the CRM portion, but we need to then click on the website portion. So I'm going to go up here to the top and I'm going to click on website and dashboard. So I want to see what my homepage currently looks like. Now you'll notice that every time we've done a webinar on here, we see updates happening. One of the newer features that has occurred here is notice there's a preview pane or preview window of what my homepage currently looks like. I happen to have what's called the agent social layout. I also have where I can go in and change the homepage layout or I can edit the content that's in it. But if I wanna see what it really looks like, this is a best practice. Notice I'm not published yet. This is really, really important because I get a lot of questions on this about how do I make my website live or does my broker have to publish my website? The answer is no, you have total control over that so what you need to do is if your blue button is lit up here where it says publish, that means you have not gone live yet on your website. Now you can always unpublish. So if I click this button accidentally, uh oh, I didn't mean to do that because I'm not ready yet, then I can just immediately unpublish that website. So it's really not going to affect a whole lot. All that it means is that you're making your website available for the general public for it to be found. But are you going to get found is the real question and that's what we're going to look at. We need to optimize. So what we're going to do is let's see what our website looks like before we start making changes to it. Maybe we don't need to. I spoke to someone yesterday that said, I like what's there. I'm, want, I'm going to sell real estate. I don't want to spend a lot of time working on my website. I'm just going to use the content that's, that's there and they can search and it's good to go. And you know what? I applaud him. That's what you have to figure out. If you wanna spend time designing your website, you absolutely should. If you don't, you don't have to. There's already things there. So in order to get to your site, before it's published, you're gonna be technically in what's called preview mode. In order to see this, so watch what happens. When I click my link to my site, it's, it's prompting me to enter some credentials. Now, where do I find those credentials? I'm gonna go back to this dashboard and there's a little eye right next to this URL that I'm going to click. And it's going to give me what I need to type in to that preview window where it's asking me to type those credentials in. Here they are. So you wanna jot those down and that's what we're gonna type in. I have them memorized already. <laughs> and some of you probably already do too. So by going up here to get into my site, I'm gonna type in beta-user, capital B E T A tester, 123 exclamation. So you're going to need to do this again if you are in preview mode where you're not published yet. Okay, so as you can see, I can now see what my site looks like. Now I've obviously been doing things to it and setting different templates up and uh, adding new graphics and images. So right now this is my site. It has an image that I've entered. So just one image, not a slideshow, which is, this is my header by the way, it has a search bar. I actually started breaking it apart in certain areas. So this is for the Indianapolis area. This is just showing some of the main areas that are part of the community. Now you can take this to a whole new level 
by doing this. I'm going to show you how to do this, by the way, how to set these up. And you can even do, you can add all kinds of other content to it. So I've been working on this, but right now I've just got a couple of content blocks featured here. Okay. So let's leave that open because here's what we want to do. When, whenever we make changes, we want to go back and look at it to see what it looks like, even outside of the preview window. So what's going to be happening is one of the things you want to do is let's say that you want to go in and you want to add a content block, just like what I just did. So you want to do edit agent social layout. And by the way, I'm working on the home page. So before we do anything, I want to talk about search engine optimization because at the very least, you should definitely optimize your home page. So watch what I've done. Once again, I'm going to show you. Let's go back. I'm going to exit out of here. I'm going to optimize my home page before I start any other content. We're going to go to website and dashboard. That's the only way you can get to your home page. Next, I'm going to click edit because I want to get inside the page. Then I'm going to go up to where it says page details. So on this particular page, what I want to do is I want to be able to optimize it. What does that mean? So what that means is whenever someone does a search, so if I type in real estate Indianapolis or homes for sale, whatever it is, anytime you type anything in Google, you're going to scan down and you're going to look for headlines. So see this bluish purple headline that you see right here and you see every single day of your life when you type things in Google, that's called a meta title. Okay, so as you scroll down, anything in bluish purple is going to be called a meta title. What's underneath it is called a meta description. So I know this sounds technical in advance for some of you, but you know what? You have control over what your meta title and meta description actually says, and you might not have known that. So see this bluish purple headline? It's kind of like the old days of the newspaper. Your eyes are scanning to see what headline catches your attention and if you should read it. In this case, you're trying to catch people's attention, but then the description below it gives them a preview of what they can expect to try to entice them to click on it. So we're gonna look at this and how that will appear. So here's some rules behind meta title and meta description. And by the way, this is just the homepage. You should do this for every page on your website and make it pertain specifically to the content on that page. In this case, it's a general homepage. We just want to get people there. We want them to know they can search for real estate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my title. So meta title. The best practice by Google itself says no more than 55 characters, including spaces, on the title and no more than 155 characters, including spaces, on the description. I happen to have on a Word document already some items typed out that I will show you how to do that and how to count those words. So here's what it's going to look like. So let's say that I'm in the Madison, Wisconsin area. On this Word document, this is my meta title and I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to show you how to do a character count. So this is a Word doc. You can do this on Google Doc or other similar. Down here at the bottom, it says 27 words. But what I'm going to do is let me make sure I cover it. There we go. I'm going to click right here and it's going to open up this dialog box that will tell me how many characters with spaces I just typed and it says 45. So I'm way I'm under the 55 on that. So good to go. The next thing is, and by the way, you can type more than 55 or 155 in the description. It's just the problem is it gets cut off and you have to think mobile every time you're doing something on your website. Remember, a lot of people are searching on mobile and the last thing they want to do is read long titles. Let's highlight this description and this says it's 27 words, which doesn't help me with characters, but when I click on it, it says it's 147 characters with spaces. So I'm good to go, right? I'm within the parameters that Google itself suggests. So first I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go back here. Then I'm going to go back to this right here and put that in as my description. So I'm optimizing my site for searching for homes in Madison. Now you'll notice what I did in the bottom part is, so I called out on the top, let's start at the top, homes for sale, Madison, Wisconsin. 
No, it's perfectly acceptable to speak in sort of incomplete sentences, if that makes sense. Make sure you're spelling correctly. That's why it's good to always use a Word document for all of your content here. And then you want to put in just Remax, Remax Preferred. And by the way, Remax is in all caps and a slash, no exceptions, always. Email signatures, everything. That's the proper brand. And you know what it really does? It helps you stand out on the Google results page. So we're going to type in Remax in the name of our brokerage. And then what I did was I broke it down further to very specific areas besides Madison. So I put in neighboring towns and just included the word Wisconsin. And then notice that I put my name and contact information in that description. So if someone's scrolling on mobile, they're going to go, I don't want to do this. I just want to talk to someone. They can click and they can call you. So you've got to make it easy for people. So I'm going to save these page details. And I know that's a lot of steps, so I hope you get to watch this recording back. But what I just did is I optimized my homepage. So that's what I ask of you to do at the very least is to, to optimize that homepage. You can do this on every single page. You just need to go into page details. So I've saved this. And now I'm going to go back to, my, to uh, the content itself. Now remember, a lot of you I think are already asking about how did I do this? Well, I'm going to show you how. So the way I did that is I chose the image text block. And I'm going to show you one thing that you have to do though is make sure you have your photos edited before you do this. And they should all be the same size if you really want it to look like a true grid. So I did do that in a separate program in Canva for these particular towns outside of Indianapolis. So what you do is you want to, I'm going to add another one. Oh, by the way, you can continue, continue to add to this block here. Let's say I want to add more, it will wrap around. But let me just show you from scratch what I did. So we're going to go add block and we chose image with text. So on the image with text, now I have to start building this. And again, you can do this with areas. You can do this with, um, I'm going to show you another page where I set it up with my services. And I added some images already. As you can see, it took some trial and error to get some of my images in here. So to get your images on here, you would choose file and go to your desktop. And this is where you would actually have your images. So you would choose from any images that are on your desktop, but I've already done that. So I would actually choose, I happen to know number eight is a good one. And I'm gonna click insert. So now I'm going to type in, like I did before, the name of the town. And then here's what you've got to think about. You don't necessarily need to type in a long description here if you're planning to set this up grid style. So as I did before, uh, we could say west of Indianapolis. And I have this typed out on a Word document so you can copy and paste it in. Hey, Michelle, while you're doing that, we've got a couple questions about the sizes for the grid. Uh -huh. um, so what size do you use for the grid and what is the ideal photo size for the layout? So what I did on this particular exercise, I went on Canva and I created a 900 by 600 image. So I, I started, what you do in Canva is you start with, you create a custom dimensions and then you drop the photos into it and it may end up cropping them or whatever it takes. So in this particular instance, I did 900 by 600 pixels and it seemed to work really well. I also use the PhotoFi photos in a different setting and I'll show you what those look like too. So, and we'll actually do an exercise on that. Avon has shopping and dining. So I'm just gonna keep this short. Here's something else you can do too. You might've noticed previously, let's see if I can show it to you. See where it has this link that says learn more. This is where you have to have additional, you have to have a whole page set up. Like in this case, I would have to have a whole page dedicated to Avon, a whole page dedicated to Brownsburg. So those you have to set up separately in order to link back to that area. This is just sort of a sneak preview what we're doing. So what I'd want to do is the text I would type in is learn more, or in some cases it'll be, you know, click here or something like that. So learn more. You have to make sure that it's a valid URL so I did create a, a specific page for Avon. Now I, would need, I, I need to get out of here for a second because I just realized that I didn't copy that. So let me save this. And I need to go find that page. So that's something I should have done in the first place. So this is what will happen. See, there's a lot of back and forth. So let me get that URL first. 
I'm going to find the page that I created for Avon right here. So go in your pages. And what you want to do is you just want to go right here, preview. And you want to be able to get people back there. Okay, actually, I probably don't want to do this. Let me try again. Okay, so let me go to the page. Actually, I guess I will I'll just grab this one. You know, I just realized I need to publish. Okay, I did this yesterday. So let me go back and publish and then I'll get because you want your official URL, not the one hidden behind the curtain, which is what I just did. So this is a good example. So let me go to publish my site. So I get an official URL for that page. So you have to be published. Now as I go into my site up here. I'm going to refresh. This is the best way to get it. So I'm going to go up here. And I happen to have this page on my menu. So now I just go up here and copy this. Let's go back to the home page and let's add that URL to that particular image block. Hey, Michelle. Uh huh. Uh, James Abner just said that you can use the slug and add it to the end of your domain URL. Yes. Except we, I didn't know what the slug was. <laughs> and we have a couple of questions about what's the difference between the slug and the description. So the slug is anything that on any web page anywhere, it's whatever comes after the dot com. So if it's remax.com, backslash, whatever comes after that is called the slug. The description is what's actually going to appear in this instance with the photo. So you have to make sure, remember it's public facing, it's not internal to just you. So in this case, I'm gonna, let me insert the image again for Avon. Thanks James, by the way. I should have had that slug memorized. Okay, so I'm typing in Avon, Indiana and then shopping and dining. I'm just going to keep this short. We're going to go save. So what I did was now I'm building this. But notice some of you are going to be thrown off by this because you're going to go, wait a minute. How do I know that? Why is the text over here? I want it to be a grid and I want it to be underneath it. You have to start adding other images to it. So what you're going to do is you're going to click here, and this is what I did before. So now we're going to add Plainfield, which is a, another town nearby there, and it's going to go insert. By the way, when I set them up in Canva, they were 900 by 600, but when I entered them or uploaded them into the Boosh platform, it changed it to 700 by 400. It was strange, but they all still lined up right. So Plainfield. Now, again, I need to have a separate page for Plainfield or know the slug. And this is the, the same thing. So movies, restaurants, whatever you want to type just to get people interested. Down here, once again, you're going to type in learn more as the text and then the URL you'll put in there. So see what it's doing now, it's building my little grid. Now I notice that based on the image size that I use, it only lets me do three across the top. So I'm going to show you how, if you add four or six, it'll wrap around and just automatically set it up for you, which is great. So let's add another one. Let's add Brownsburg. Okay. And we'll type this in. And once again, learn more. And I'm just using the same link. Okay, I'm gonna do this again. And watch what happens when I keep adding more. Cause some of you have been seeing websites, we've been showing them to you. So I admit 
that we've been showing you websites, but now we need to show you how to actually do it the way some of the other agents in the network have done. So Michelle Belisari was a Florida agent that a lot of you saw in some of our webinars, and we did that with hers. So I'll just use the same images again. This is where if you are going to do six images, once again, make sure they're all the same size. So insert. And this will not let you save until you actually put some type of description. We're just going to keep continue this. Okay, so see what happened already? It started to wrap around for me. And we'll just do one more so you get the general idea. I know that sounds like a lot of steps, but a lot of you are ready for this. I know that because you've been asking and you just want to make your website look really good, especially your homepage. So let's put another one in and do the same thing. See, this is what's great about the Bouge websites. Notice on the right hand side, there is a preview window so you can see everything that's happening at the same time. And one thing I recommend, obviously I'm doing this really fast for the purpose of the webinar, but one thing that I had done up here is notice that there's not the same amount of text in the paragraph. So you might want to be mindful of that. If you have a design eye, this might drive you crazy where you see just one sentence under Brownsburg and then you see two under Plainfield and one under Avon. So if you want it to look really nice, aesthetically pleasing, just try to match those up so that you have the exact same amount of content. So we're in a different content block down below. Okay, so see, I'm building this content block. So I could have done this up here and I still can. I could hide that and just use this. So let's say I look at this and I really like it. I'm gonna go back to block details. Oh, sorry, I'm gonna go back to the page itself. And I think, well, I like what I just did better than what I did before. So I'm gonna put this in draft mode so it's hidden. I'm gonna turn this on and then I'm gonna move this up to the top because I like that better. So see, I just moved this up to the top, all right? So let me show you something else that I did on this site. And then Erica, please feel free to ask questions because I know, I'm sure there's a lot pouring in right now. Actually, there's not too many because it's, you're being very, very clear. It's very easy to follow with what you're saying. Okay. Um, but it looks like Sean has just asked, which content block was this again? It's image text. So it's very basic. Uh, let me go back and I'll show, and by the way, to get into the content blocks, you have to be inside of a page editor. I'm hoping down the road that you'll have just a whole library of content blocks. So it really any page itself, which you're in right now, you can just open one up and click edit. And it's this one right here, it says image text. So add a block, not the slideshow, not numbered and not stepped, it's just image text. And you'll notice since we first rolled this out that these content blocks have changed in the way they look and feel too. So you kind of have to get familiar with those. When I send the follow-up email, I have a slide deck I got from LLC that explains all these content blocks in a much more detailed way that I think will make a lot of sense to all of you. So I want to show you something else that I did. So one of the ideas for a custom page is to maybe create even a menu item too of your services. So on my actual page, what I did was I created a page that says my services. So I'll show you what that looks like. This could be added as its own menu item, which I'll show you how to do. And this is something that I encourage all of you to consider trying to do. Now I use Photofy graphics on this. Here's my client services. Each client receives a custom plan for selling or buying a home. I used Photofy and then I kind of just set this up. Now I didn't add links here. I will, once I create pages, I'll put learn more or because I have separate pages for each of these. So setting the stage, my marketing services and my luxury real estate division. So these are my services that I offer my clients. Now I still need to work on this page a little bit, but I wanted to show you how this can be. And in the menu of my site, it can be its own menu item. So I'm just on this one page in preview mode. So let me go back. And once again, let's look at 
my page by clicking here. So here's my page again, and here's my menu items. So I can add my services under resources, which I should do, right? So I will do that, but right now that page is not part of my menu, and I'll show you how to do that. So let's go here, let's go to website, and let's go to navigation. In order to control your menu, you have to go to navigation. Now remember, a lot of this work has to do with you creating pages behind the scenes before you make any moves whatsoever. So I've already started that with the My Services page, and we'll say that it's exactly the way I want it. What you need to do is you need to go over here, you hover over this section, and then you're going to move it. So if I want this to be under Resources, I'm gonna click and hold it, and I'm gonna drag it to this section and drop it in. Oh, what happened? There we go, it worked. Sometimes you have to try it a couple times. So by putting it over here, it is now part of my menu and it's now part of my active navigation. Now I can create its own menu item where I have drop downs underneath it, just like resources. So if I don't want it to be part of resources, I can just drop it in as its own by maybe putting it right above resources. Okay, let's try this again. There we go. So again, just takes a little practice. So you see it's now its own. And then I have, remember I start, have the one page that's staging services. So I can now drop this in. And it's now the parent relationship is my services, staging services is right underneath it. Then I can put my luxury real estate and everything underneath it. So let's look at it, what it looks like on the actual website. So let's refresh. And let's go here. Let's go to the menu. Let me refresh the page. Okay, so remember I made those changes. And right here, my services is now its own menu item. And then if I click here, it's going to have staging services. Now I haven't finished this page yet and I'm in test mode. I notice that happens a lot. And I have a test account, so I can't do a lot of the same things you can do on live, but that's what essentially what it'll do. It'll take it directly to the staging page. Okay. I want to show you something else. What you can do is another idea for a page is there's, there's information on Remax, but you could actually set up your own page that says why Remax or create something special and custom. And I have PhotoFi images for that. So if you happen to like a template that you are already using on, so let's say that I really like the way I set up my Avon page, my Avon Indiana page. What you can do is you go right here to these three little dots and you click clone as template. So by doing that, it should drop it in at, you can use it again, where you go add page, create from template. So it, it was already in there, so it was already saved. But it's gonna give you the option, see like here's a my services one use template. I guess you don't really have to clone it, but what you're going to do is you're going to use anything that's already saved as a template and you start over again. Okay. So that way you're not building from scratch every single time like we did. I do also want to show you video. So something else you might want to consider, let's go back to the home page. Have you considered recording a welcome message to your website? So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna add a video at the bottom of my page that welcomes people to my website. So we're gonna do add block. And what we wanna do is do video. Now video embed doesn't mean technically you can put in code and embed the video. It has to be hosted on either YouTube or on Vimeo. So I'm gonna call this welcome to my website. Okay, now I'm gonna go get my video, which I already have set up in here. Actually, let me go.
Okay, I need to get into my own channel because I just added them. So by the way, here's a little crash course on YouTube. When you are logged in as yourself, you click on your picture and you go to your channel. And my videos, you have to find over here. So some of these are unlisted, but I already have uploaded my video. So this is my welcome to my website. Click this little link or open it. And you click the share button to generate a link. So let's go back. And there's my video. So I'm going to hit save. So there's my message right there. Hi, my name is Michelle Hoyt and I am with Remax All Stars in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Welcome to my website, isellhomes.com. On my website, you can expect to find the ability to search for any homes for sale in the Milwaukee area. You can also find information about all the different neighborhoods around town. And finally, you'll be able to see the services that I offer. I hope that you enjoy your time here, and should you need anything, you can contact me from any page on this website. Thank you so much for visiting, and have a good day. Okay, 30 seconds, short and sweet, everyone. So that's an option for a welcome to your website. Another one is a bio video. Now, I know there's a bio block that you really can't edit. It's all fed over from Mac Center, but if you wanna set up an about me page that features the bio block, but also a video, that's something you can do too. So I will show you that opportunity too and how to feature your story on video. Let me get out of here. Okay, I need to refresh. There we go. So if I want to set up a page, we're just going to create a new page. We're going to call it about now this is where it gets interesting because a lot of times a lot of you have asked me, do I say about me or do I say about Michelle Hoyt? Do I say my name? It's kind of weird if you're talking about yourself in the third persons. Remember, this is your website on remax.com. It makes more sense for you to be spoken about in the third person, but on your own website, it's okay to, to say it's about me. So under description, you could say, you know, something to the effect my story and obviously expand upon that and we're going to hit save then what you want to do is if you want to immediately start out we got to do the headline so the headline could be just an image and we'll just choose one from the library here here's a little tip on these photos by the way let's say that you're looking for a picture of a living room if you just type in a keyword it's going to populate with all these images that are tagged with the word living. To do the same thing with kitchen. Only spell it right. <laughs> and there's all the kitchen images. So there you go. You can do that too. Hey, Michelle. Uh huh. We've gotten a couple of really good questions around YouTube as well. Um, Dan asks, do you know how to control the playlist on the screen after the YouTube video ends? Yes. Um, so, well, you can, what you want to do is you can set up playlists, whatever video that they're, well, by the way, that one was unlisted and it's a, it's a one-off video. So it's not going to be part of a playlist. So I would need to look further into that. But any other, if you want to make your videos public, you can set those up to just automatically have a playlist follow them. Now you need to have a vast library in your, on your channel in order for that to happen. So you can do that. You can have, there are settings in there to create it that way. So this is about me, my story in real estate. That's a good question. And yeah, that's and always- Anne asked a question about video as well, Ann Connolly. Um, uh -huh. says that her YouTube video is too large and distorted. Boosh has no way to make the video frame smaller and she can't figure out to ha add, how to add text to the left or right side of the video. 
So um, hold that thought for a second, Anne. I will answer that because there's, there's a couple of different ways to use video on here. Um, you could use it in slideshow format if you would like or stepped. Um, I'll, I'm going to show you one last thing and then I'll jump right over there. So it's a great question. Okay, so let me go back to my YouTube channel. And this time I'm going to grab the other video that I added, which was my bio. And the reason I have these unlisted everyone is because again, they're, they're meant for a very specific platform, which is my website or this instance, the bio page or the about me page. But most of the time you're gonna do everything public. My story in real estate. Save. So there it is. Okay, I'll play this for you. Put myself on the spot here. Hi, my name is Michelle Hoyt and I'm with Remax All Stars in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. My story is pretty simple. I absolutely love real estate and helping others find the home that's perfect for them. I have been in the Milwaukee area for two decades now, helping families from first time buyers to empty nesters to everyone in between. When I'm not working, I can be found camping and fishing with my family or playing with my dog. One of the things I like to do is I love giving back. So in every one of my transactions, I give back to the Children's Miracle Network. I hope that I get to meet you in person and I appreciate you watching my video. Thanks. And I know some of you are probably already asking for a script. I'll be happy to provide some scripts. So those of you that know me and come to my video classes know that I'm full of scripts. So I'm happy to do that. Yeah, so like this right here, obviously we don't want it to show recipes and things like that or could potentially put someone with another real estate agent for sure. Um, okay, so Anne was asking, so let's say that I wanna add more videos here. The way, when you add the video embed content block, it's going to obviously upload the video in a pretty big format. It takes up almost the full width of the page. We, there's other video blocks that you can use where right here, there's video slideshow, and that could be a potential solution for you, Anne. So when you click video slideshow, now you're gonna do a, the same thing. You're gonna copy and paste a video. So this could be, and I'm not sure what your intent is behind, you know, if, if you wanna do a series of videos or if it's just one, and you could do this, let's see. Save. So just like an image slideshow, you're going to be adding different videos. But as you do that, let's see what happens, what it looks like. So you might need to add more than one. I don't know that the full solution is going to be there for you at this time, but let's do another one. So see, already I've got videos here. Although you're right, I don't see the option to add any text underneath them. Might not be able to. I James, didn't think you were able to. I was like, ask James Abner if he's on here. He knows. <laughs> or Dan Bertelson. Uh, I don't think there is at this time. So I can't say that that's going to, let's, let's just look again. Image text slideshow, video embed, video slideshow, block thumbnails. I only see those two options. Sorry, Ann. Definitely something we'll provide feedback for. I know that video is huge right now. So I was going to show you what I did with my services page that might be helpful to you, or my staging page actually is the one I wanted to show you. Those of you that do this, so I actually used images, but I used a slideshow and I actually just got these images directly from the site here. So I did staging services because your home deserves to look its best. I did a little slideshow here. So about accessories and what I provide for my clients, how I utilize furniture to make, sure, make a room look its absolute best and maximize the space. 
and then exterior spaces. Staging isn't limited to interior spaces. So I just wanted you to see just some possibilities with all these different pages in your services. What else can we answer for you? I know I put a lot out there. <laughs> Um, we have one question. How many characters are allowed in the meta description? In the meta description, 155, including spaces. Awesome. And then Ann says, Remax University shows blocks examples when they had a class last week about blocks, but I can't find them. Shows the image with the video and text next to it. Well, I happen to have that. I had that queued up. Let's go here. There it is. So this is the slide deck that I got from them last week. And let's see if we can find what you're looking for. Video embed. Text and image. Unless they showed it live, I'm just kind of scrolling through what they have. Image and text content block. I only saw a couple of things on video. And you may be right. I, I will certainly find that out for you, Anne, and I'll contact you directly. Call to action. I'm not seeing it on here. Maybe they showed it live. Let's try again. And it may be because I only put a couple of videos on there. Once you start adding more videos and it, it may wrap around and do that effect like it did for the images, I'll have to test it out. Sorry. All right, and then Andy asks, how do you get a video to open in a new tab instead of replacing the website? So when a video is embedded and when a video is on a page, it just, the page, I'm not sure I'm understanding your question because it doesn't, it shouldn't open on a new page. You should be able to play it. Remember what I just did? I did play it. Let me see. I guess the only way that would happen is if you're just using the YouTube link as a hyperlink versus embedding it into your site. I would always recommend that you embed it into your site. So let's go to my home page once again. Let's refresh. So on my home page, remember I added the video welcoming people to my website. Let's refresh. I hope it's there. <laughs> okay. Wait, let me check. I might have it in draft mode. That's the key. If this, so if this happens and you don't see your video, yeah, see it's in draft mode. So let me turn this on. Now I'm gonna go back to my site. Click here. I got too many windows open. Let's refresh. And see, that's already embedded into the page. So when I play it, it stays on the website. So if anything else is happening, if you could put in a ticket to our support team and maybe repeat those steps, we definitely want to know what's happening there. One of the other- Oh, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say one of the other most popular things we're getting asked about is those is safe searches like specific to an area. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to cover that right now unless there's another question you think is more important. And then we'll no, wrap go ahead, up. Kevin, we do have a couple of questions about that. Okay, sounds good. So really quick, I want to show some of you. And thanks for hanging out with us. I know we're a few minutes over. We've been showing you a lot this website here, michellebelisari.remax.com. And she this is an agent in a company-owned region in Florida. She's had her website since August, so she's had lots of time to work on it. And one of the things she's done is she set up, now you all know how to do these grids, right? And set up these little, um, the setup right here. Notice she has here, view information and all homes for sale here on each of these areas that she works in. And she did a nice job of laying this out. It's just one sentence, it's, it's all the same sentence actually. And when I click here, watch what happens. It'll take me to a page that she set up for Boynton Beach. 
So this is something you'll have to do and you'll have to create it. Don't copy and paste from other websites, by the way, type it in your own words. But right here it says, view all homes for sale in Boynton Beach, Florida. So when you click here, it's actually going to take you to a specific search just for this city. Now you can even set it up with filters where it's, you know, you eliminate rentals, you eliminate land or whatever you want to eliminate. Right now it just has, a, it has 11 filters on it. So if I click here, it's going to show that virtually every piece of property is checked off here, but I'm going to show you how to do this. Because right now, and those of you that remember Placer, we had these things called area pages where you could set it up this way. So let, here's what you have to do. First of all, your site has to be published in order to do this. That's the key. Now, because I have a test account, I'm going to use Michelle's website and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do this. So we're gonna pretend her website is mine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right here and we're gonna use these boxes and I'm going to go back into the back end of my website. And remember, I'm on my home page, and this is where I had the image with text. So I need to click on the pencil to edit it. So instead of where it says learn more under Avon, I could change this. Now I already have a page. I could change it to search for homes or view homes for sale or something like that. So if I click here, where it says learn more, I'm gonna change this to view homes, or better yet, homes for sale in Avon. Okay, that'll catch someone's attention. Now, instead of this link, which took me to the Avon page, what I need to do is do a search on my very own website for homes in Avon, Indiana. Again, we're pretending Michelle's website is Avon, Indiana. Uh, what I'm doing is now I'm gonna go do a search right here. Now I have to type in a Florida city. Work with me here, especially Indiana people. I put Indiana. So notice when you type it in, it should auto-populate on its own. So this would be Avon. See, again, your site has to be published and your IDX has to be enabled in order for you to do this. So do a search for that town on your website. Has to be your website. Don't do it on remax.com. Do it on your website. Okay, so here's my search results is for this particular town. Now, what I wanna do is I can actually change this Let's say that I don't want rentals, I don't want farm, I don't want land, and I wanna leave the rest open for interpretation. And then of course you can turn these toggles on too if you want to, but at the very least you could do that. Of course you don't wanna limit yourself to a certain price range, but it's got eight filters now instead of 11. So you don't have to save this search right here like a consumer would. You just go up here to the top and you copy this URL, okay? So command C in the case of a Mac. I'm gonna go back to my Bouge site and paste this in. Okay, so now this link, Homes for Sale in Avon, will go directly to the search that I created for Avon. And you're gonna repeat this on each of these little blocks. Now I'm gonna go back to my page and show you that it actually worked. I know this is a lot of steps, so I appreciate you hanging with me. Okay, so here we are, homes for sale in Avon. When I click here, it's gonna go directly to these search results. Hey, I have nine, fil oh, there we go, eight filters, look at that. So it took my changes and it's taking me directly to this page. Was that easy to follow, Erica? Yes, it was. Okay, good. My gift to all of you. <laughs> it's a workaround. It's definitely a workaround. Do you have time for a few more questions? Of course, yes. All right, okay. so Jamie asks, can you talk about how you use the Photify images on Bouge? And how do you get those from the app to your computer? 
Okay, I will show you exactly what I did. So first of all, create them on the Photofy app. So I'm gonna pull this up. You're gonna see my phone here in just a second. Okay, so first of all, open up Photofy, which is right here next to the little Remax stickers. And then what you wanna do is you wanna get into the app. There's a little bit of a delay, sorry. So I can do a couple of things. I can just click on templates. And then what I did is in a couple of instances like this, the services page or the staging page or my listing services. So here's my template and then you click behind it to just grab a photo and there's my image. Now notice all my information's already filled out. So you have to have a complete profile on your Photofy app to get this to take really quickly. Now you can add stickers and everything else. I'm just gonna hit done. I did review my changes. Okay, so you hit done and it'll process. And then what I did was go all the way down to the bottom, see where it says more share options. I am now able to save this image right here. So see the save image, I'm on an iPhone by the way. So my photo has been shared. So it's now in my library in my photos and I have a MacBook Air, which my all my Apple devices are synced. So see, I already had images on there. So I saved all of my photo file images to my library and they now they auto populated onto my MacBook. So this is the one I just created and there it is. So now I can actually on my desktop, I can start uploading photos into the photo editor of Bouge. Now, those of you that have an Android, you could just drop them in Google Drive and then go to your desktop Google Drive and just download them from there. So your Google, use the Google Drive app, drop the or Google Photos, drop the, app, the photos in there from Photofy. They'll save on your phone for photo library, but then drop them in a program where you can access them from desktop. So I hope that helps. There's a lot of cool graphics in here. There's really good ones for Remax. If you want to have a Y Remax page that goes beyond what's already provided. And um, that's why I save these images here about the number of visits we have on our website. Nobody sells more real estate, all of that. Okay, what's next? Um, so I think the last one that we can probably close with is on your welcome video that you just showed Michelle, how did you insert that picture behind you? <laughs> just like the one I have now. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, I know a lot of you are very curious about this. So you have to know a little bit about video, but using Zoom, which a lot of you have been, we have this thing called virtual backgrounds. So right next to the video icon, when you're broadcasting a webinar or meeting, there's an option to add a virtual background. So it does need to be sized about right for it. So we actually had our creative team created graphics for us to use on our zoom background so i do all of this is a background that's been created what i did was this is a little more complicated because like bomb bomb and some of these other programs you can't just insert a virtual background right away some of you might know how to do that but green screen obviously is always a good way to go but no matter what you're going to have to record yourself and then turn around and upload that video somewhere so what i did was i just turned on my own personal meeting for zoom with my background and then I screen captured it with Camtasia, which is the screen capture recording. So I just recorded it. I, I chose the region of the screen, recorded it, and then I uploaded the video file to YouTube. So I know that might sound a little complicated, but it is a Zoom background. So it does work. So hopefully you can try that. Anything else, everyone? Great questions. I, I really hope that this was helpful and at least gets those creative juices flowing. I'm uh, so always excited to share these fun things with you. More to come. There's a lot of new features being released in Bouge this quarter, which we'll be glad to talk about. 
And we're going to start doing more regular webinars, a little bit shorter ones, 30 minutes here in the coming week. So look out for those. Anything else, Erica? Um, let's see here. Amanda says, what is the name of the program to record Zoom meetings? Well, Zoom meetings record themselves. So you, you potentially could just record inside a Zoom and try to capture yourself with the background that way too. So I just did it a couple extra steps because I know how to do video editing and I had to do some video editing because of course you're going to mess up and there's always bloopers. But um, you can record yourself on Zoom and download that MP4 file, but then you may have to edit it from there. What I used was called Camtasia. It is a full program, generally runs about 400 to get the full Camtasia screen capture and video editing program. So yeah. Anything else? Love giving those tech tips. Anne asks, how do I find the PDF screenshots of the Blocks webinar? Oh, I'm actually going to send that to everyone in a follow-up. In the follow-up with this recording and everything else, I'll send them to you. Okay. Um, and yeah, I think that's pretty I, much I, I, the majority of them. Okay. And I definitely need to find out more about the video and the text for you, Anne. I will look into that for you. Okay. All right. Thanks everyone so much for your help this morning and, and your excitement. And I, I'm excited to see your websites. Please send me your URLs. Just text them to me or email them or Facebook message me. And I want to see your sites. Erica wants to see them too, because we like to show good examples when we get asked for them. So thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your day. Hopefully it's warm and sunny where you are. And we'll see you next time. Thanks.